Ko le faa maa maa avenga le nei ma le Pacific Easy, mo au tu pe faa mo moli sa mo au ta kuni ai ofisa mo le faa va yaso. Faa nga nei lola na wa unang forward sa ua, o le direct transfer. A faa wa yesa membership card ma e faa nga ina le internet banking, o le matua e faa ingo fi e lava. Na le tiposi ma e lava lau se eleni in matua account, o le faa tino leo la fo ina o lau se eleni mo a inga i sa mo. E ye 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 inga i ta hu na faa ma le ina, mo ni si faa ma talanga ele nei au au nang fo. Bala au le telefoni o val se lau o o o ta si o nono, po le lua fitu o no fitu iva fitu faa. Pe teks mai fo ilo su a faa ili valu tolu o. Voucher is one of the most convenient ways that I'm finding now to do my shopping here at Mama Jo. And I, my sister just sent through the voucher on my cell phone, and I just come straight into Mama Jo to do my shopping. Well, let's see if you have a bit of silly on the town. Well, in Lafo, we're a bit of a style of law. I think it's really convenient for families overseas if they don't know what to have to help their families here. Like we have a lot of families here, this is the perfect way. My dear, I'm so sad. 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 I'm so Hello everyone, my lola so for mo my ling emma and a warm Pacific greetings to everyone that's tuning in today. Ah, oh, Talia wants to say hello to everyone. Yes, Chloe and I were just discussing the reality yeah. of a working mum and during COVID where we need to keep our children safe. And well, daycare, well. Dicky is just not cutting it right now. Um, unfortunately, they are uh, under the pump, you know, with yeah. uh, only a limited of 10 people per uh, bubble. So, you know, a massive, massive shout out to everyone um, that's just doing it rough during this time. Um, but, you know, this is Blue Table Taranoa, uh, where we live and breathe Pacific. Claudia, how have you been? And thank you for keeping Talia entertained today. <laughs> <laughs> Tala for lover, everyone, and welcome um to this beautiful monday on blue table podcast <laughs> guys you know this is just the reality of things and you know we've always said that here on blue table podcast um we keep things 100 real with yeah. you guys and we can't get any more realer than this um but you know it is a special day because we have a little on say the show hi everybody well hi. hello <laughs> okay she wants to open the bubbles but guys you know <clears throat> I am still buzzing now over the amazing Fijian language I week we had know. last week. And um, <laughs> yeah, she wants bubbles. But guys, you know, really, really cool news. Um, Fiji Airways has announced that as of December the 1st, it is going to start um, flights again from New Zealand to Fiji. Now, there's going to be daily flights from Auckland to Fiji with three flights a week from Christchurch and two flights a week from Wellington. Now, travellers that do fly to Fiji need to be fully vaccinated. But guys, this is just one step closer to having all the borders open. I'm and, so excited. you know, if the borders to Fiji are opening um, from the 1st of December, that surely must mean that the borders to Samoa will be opening soon oh, as look, well. So I'm super, super crossed. excited. Um, you know, it is, it is. you know, it's, it's still a battle with everyone uh, not wanting mm. to get vaccinated or vaccinated. But the truth is, I think um, we've mentioned it again last yeah, week bye. as well. Was, <laughs> um, just dig deep. Yeah. And really, really find um, what is right for you and your family. Mm. Block out everything else. Yeah. Uh, really do block out everything else because it's important. It's important that um, whatever you decide, it's based, it's, it is your choice. Yeah. Even, you know, I actually read an interesting article which is actually set, put, posted up by um, Sinio as well and Helen um, where they actually posted up a <laughs> meme of, uh, of you know, what we every day we we abide by simple rules like fasten your seatbelt, 
when we are travel overseas, we are told to, or we are asked to, please fasten your seatbelt when you travel. Um, these are uh, simple rules that are put in place to, you know, make us, you know, just to, to protect us. It's, this, it's similar. It's the same thing. So I do ask everyone to really dig deep when you are deciding on what you're going to do, yeah. what's right for you and what is right for your family. Um, look, uh, once again, I do apologise that we've got little Miss Talia here. Um, I'm going to... Um, do a hospital pass on this one and I'm going to blame. Who are we going to blame today? <laughs> Honestly, I just think, you know, it just shows the reality of working, um, especially yeah. now during lockdown. Um, but, you know, uh, Bear knows that I always like to share the most randomest things than what I think is funny um, on the show. So over the weekend, I was actually watching Family Feud, yeah. um, um, hosted by Steve Hardy. Um, Harvey, sorry. So I'm actually going to share this video. <clears throat> it was called The Dumbest Answers Ever. <laughs> You see, she gets it. <laughs> she already knows it's funny. So, um, you know how Family Feud works, yes, right? Yeah. Okay. So the first question you asked was, "What comes after the word pork?" So you've got pork loins, yes. pork, pork chops. chops. Now this guy, you know, college student, he leans into the microphone and he goes, "Porcupine." <laughs> like, that could work. Well, what's, what's your point? Yeah, it's true. But, yeah. Okay, so that was the funniest one that I thought. The second one was, what is something that is hard to do with your eyes open? Hard to do with your eyes open. Now, your obvious answers are sleep. Yes. Um, this guy, also in college, very confidently says, read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. I know. Silly, silly guy. Now, <clears throat> I thought this was the last one, I swear. Um. Steve asked, I could never make love to someone that looks like, you know, and your obvious answers could be like your parents, your siblings. Yep. Now yep. this married woman on the show goes, like my husband. <laughs> I could never make love to someone that looks like my husband. And Steve tried to explain it to her. She was like, yeah, my husband. And she didn't get it. So, No, you know what? I, 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 you got to love Family Feud. I actually, I absolutely love it. I mean, the weekend, what was the weekend like for me? We had White Sunday and it was so awesome to see so many of our Ainga, our families and friends all over the globe celebrating um, Lea Sosa at um, And, you know, I just wanted to say congratulations to everyone who took a moment to, even though COVID affected us in such a massive way, they still celebrated the positive vibes. And I just wanted to say, um, it's really it's really important that we just continue that. Um, so a massive shout out to all of the churches who continued with their Zoom programs. It's really, really important that we stay positive. Um, and also I did want to um, make a massive um, thank you so much to... Aroma Creations. Here we've got it here. Um, we finally um, managed to get everything sorted for the Father's Day gift, um, our prize pack. Um, so everything's come through now. So a massive shout out to Aroma Creation and also to other active apparel wear um, who have finally come through. Please, if you are in New Zealand or anywhere in the globe um, and you're wondering, where's my package? Just take a moment to just remember we're all in lockdown and we just need to remember that sometimes lockdown has affected us in a different way. And I also wanted to make a, a massive shout out to Polly Stamp as well for the awesome cupcakes that have come through. Yeah. Mm. Yep. But um, you know what? I think it's time to find a new babysitter or baby <laughs> where where's baby daddy at comment below if you are looking um at making an extra ten dollars a day to babysit somebody um otherwise um yeah should yeah. we yes we are gonna head into a break because um you know it hasn't been probably um hasn't been an easy yeah weekend because we did have 94 cases of COVID yes. over the weekend which brings me to the COVID update of today we have 35 new cases in the community all cases are in Auckland 14 have known links and the remaining are being investigated um, now this brings it to a total of 1622 total community cases linked to the current outbreak now there are 33 people in hospital, seven in ICU. Now, after the 94 uh, COVID cases over the weekend, we thought, you know, 
We know, understand that a lot of people from our community must be feeling a little bit stressed and worried and, um, yeah, stress just over the uncertainty mm. of what the future is going to bring us. So we thought that we would bring the lovely Josephine Bartley on the show and we're going to have a conversation over COVID and ask her all the pressing questions that are on everyone's lips. So we are going to go into a quick little break, um, but don't go anywhere. Stay tuned, guys. ตัวทัวร์มันเอาเอาหนังอะไรหมดตัวสามมอสเซอร์วิสเตชเนี่ยตัวไหนมาตัวเตียวตัวนั้นเราจะเอาไว้เลยมันจะเล่าลิสต์
Josephine, you know, I'm just going to get right into it because over the weekend there were 94 new COVID cases and so people are starting to feel um, a lot more scared at the moment. Um, they're a lot more uncertain of what the future um, holds us. Can you just explain to our viewers um, what these 94 new cases mean for the country? Yeah, I think people should be worried about those 94 cases, but they should also be worried about the cases that we don't know about. You know, we already know that there's people out there with COVID, but they're too scared to do anything about it. You know, uh, it's just like anything. If you know that you've got something, you, you don't actually want to know. You just don't, don't want to deal with it. And there are a lot of people out there in our communities that have it, but are not doing anything about it. So, yeah, people should be scared and they should go and vaccinate. That's the only way you can survive COVID is if you vaccinate. And I'm sorry to be blunt, but that is the ultimate truth. No, we, we do like to keep it very um, real here on the Blue Table podcast. And that probably leads into um, my next question, which is um, what is the likelihood at the rate we're going at now, what is the likelihood that we will still be in lockdown um, straight through Christmas? Well, I mean, like we keep seeing more people uh, reported with COVID. We see uh, more active cases out there. So I reckon we're going to stay in level three, whatever level three they break it down to for quite a while, because, you know, um, we have to. That's the only way to contain this is if we still have those restrictions and we keep people at home, because that's how COVID travels is because people are getting out there. So um, I, I expect us, I mean, this is my own opinion, but I expect us to stay in lockdown a little bit longer and probably till Christmas, yeah. Yeah, um, and you know, and you did touch on this, that, you know, the only way that we can really stand a fighting chance is um, through getting everyone vaccinated. Um, but there are still people out there um, and very vocal people on social media um, that are very against the vaccination. Some saying that it's because there haven't been enough studies done on it. So they don't want to inject themselves with, you know, something that they are not 100 percent sure of. What do you say to the people that are scared um, about getting vaccinated? Um, well, I guess you have to weigh up your fear, right? Because if you don't vaccinate it, if you don't vaccinate, there's a high chance that you will catch it. There's a high chance that any of us will catch it. And um, yeah, weigh up your fear of getting this vaccine or dying in hospital. So balance that out and see how you go. Um, in terms of the questions around it hasn't been tested, I interviewed Dr. Appy because that's what a lot of people in the churches in my area were telling me hasn't been tested. Dr. Appy is part of the Pacific COVID response and he was telling me that it has been tested. It's been tested um, when they were doing tests for, um, what is that other virus? Um, SARS virus. So he said it's been tested for a while now, um, about 18, 19 years that they have been doing tests on this kind of vaccine. So he reassured me that it was safe. And so based on that, I'm basing it on medical opinion that it is safe. Um, I was supporting the Vodafone, the South Seas mass vaccination event out this week. And I could see people in the cars were worried and they looked scared. They looked anxious, um, but they were in the cars getting their shots because, well, I don't know, they have many reasons why they were in those queues. Um, 7,041 cars were in those queues. Wow. Uh, but it was, yeah, at the end of the day, I guess people realise they need to keep themselves safe. And this is the only way they're going to have a chance to fight it. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. So you're definitely right because, you know, um, I've only just been recently vaccinated with my second dose, but th I did, you know, I'm going to be fully honest. I was scared at the start. Um, you know, I was unsure about the, the side effects and I did get quite bad side effects, but you're absolutely right. You have to kind of weigh out, um, your fear with like the reality of things. And, um, I, in the end of the day, I did it to protect my family, um, and to protect my community around me. Um, but you know, the vaccination does come with an age restriction. Um, what can we kind of say to the parents who, you know, are all for the vaccination, um, but they have, 
young kids that can't get vaccinated, are these kids now at high risk for getting COVID? Yeah, they would be at high risk because I was, I, I've been in a lot of COVID meetings with Ministry of People's Ministry of Health, and they talk about um, herd immunity. So the more that get vaccinated, the more you can protect those that um, are vulnerable. So really, it really does come down to everyone getting vaccinated. My niece is, she's got a whole lot of issues um, with her immunity. And so I'm very worried about her. That's why I'm going hard, pushing everyone else to get vaccinated to keep those that are vulnerable safe. Um, otherwise, how can we participate as a society or get back to normal? We just, we won't, yeah. Essentially, it is up to us, you know, the adults and, and, you know, the people that are older than their age restriction to get vaccinated in order to protect our next generation, in order to protect our vulnerable young kids. Um, so, like I've said before, you, you know, you are encouraging people to get vaccinated. Um, and sorry, we just, we just have a little Talia running around, so I'm getting a little bit distracted. Um, but... Josephine, um, there are now some industries um, where it has become obligatory to be vaccinated. And as a result, those who are not vaccinated are at risk of losing their jobs. What are your thoughts around this? Um, well, I, you know, we have the same discussion at council um, because we have a lot of council events. We have the libraries, we have the gyms, you know, and we've got to provide a safe environment for people, for the public. So those people that are fronting those public facilities, they've got to be vaccinated in order for the people that use them to be safe. So I can understand the, the push for employers to ensure that they provide a safe working environment, which means people that are there need to be vaccinated. So yeah, I can understand that. I, I also, feel for those people for health reasons that can't get vaccinated yeah. but those others that are taking the standpoint of it's their belief okay sure but then what about everybody else they have a right to be safe and protected from this disease yeah. from COVID and then you've got people that are not vaccinated that could be you know putting them at risk. Definitely. Now you did touch on this but I would just like for you to kind of elaborate it on it a little bit more um, what do you say to the people that do say, you know, it is my choice, like no one can force me to get a vaccination and I can do what I want. What do you say to those people? Yeah, um, I, I get it. I get it. And, you know, I understand that people have a choice. Um, but their choice impacts on all, all of us, on our, um, our health and our livelihood. So... I think it comes to a time where you've got to consider everybody else here. It's not just about you living your life in your own bubble. That doesn't work like that. You go to a shop, you go to the park, you go here. So it's about everybody. Um, I, I just think we're past, we're past the time now where people are being patient with those that are saying, it's my choice, it's my choice. It, it, yeah, it, it's actually about safeguarding everybody so I don't I don't I don't I, Josephine, don't I, do, I do want to um give you like um say a huge congratulations as well because um I've seen it and we've all seen that you have been um very highly involved in a lot of community initiatives and in, at the moment and you are push, pushing the vaccination um so well done to you and you know COVID-19 and lockdown has been um quite I guess negative um you know it's been um very stressful and um scary um, but what are some positives that you, in your opinion, um, have come out of lockdown? I think it's made people get a little bit more uh, active in finding out more about the vaccine because there have been people that have questioned it. They've they've listened to MOH, they've you know tuned into the broadcasts, and they've gone and found out the information for themselves. So that's been good because then they've gone ahead and vaccinated. I think that's been, that's been the only positive I can see come out of this. I can't really think of any other positives because so many people are affected, um, especially in terms of food parcels. I do the food parcels in my area through our organizations. I support the organizations doing food parcels. 
and this is the most we've ever had of people needing food. So, and it's not the people that you would think it would be. It's people that were working before that never have had to ask for help. So I can't see any positives there. Um, but in terms of people trying to come together, I do see that. I do see that. I, I just see a lot of stress as well. A lot of people saying that we should work together, um, but not quite getting there because everybody's trying to act fast and you know deal with this urgently uh, and just pushing ahead uh, so I think maybe a positive to aim for would be trying to to get more yeah now, I would like to paint a picture um Josephine if you could um because you know there because we are all in lockdown there is a lot of things that we don't see that's actually happening behind the scenes and like you mentioned there are a lot more food parcels being handed out to people that and you know in other circumstances we would have never imagined um, them needing food parcels um can you please explain the reality that this lockdown and um you know the lack of vaccinations um is happening is sorry is you know causing yeah i think i i i mean because i i see it pretty clearly the reason why we're in lockdown is because of the covid right of covid so in order for us to get out of this lockdown and for businesses to get back out there and do their trading, you need to vaccinate. So actually it's in the business sector's interest to help push vaccinations so that we can try and go back to some normalcy. Um, so that, that, is, that is definitely what I'm seeing. I'm also seeing people that used to work are not working. A lot of contractors and subcontractors were struggling before and they couldn't really get into wins because wins is very, very slow. Um, and also quite a few declines there. Um, so people don't go to wins and instead they just go without. And it's their family and their friends that are seeing that, that are then reaching out to organizations and saying, hey, can you help get them some food? They're too, you know, it's their dignity, their pride, they won't ask, but people that know them know that they're struggling and ask for them. So that's what I'm seeing. Oh, look, thank you so much, um, Josephine. And look, um, thank you. I, I do apologise once again. Um, as, as, as mentioned earlier, this is, is the reality of um, those who need to, to come through to work. Um, and that um, I think for myself, um, you know, I've, I've chosen to kind of keep baby with myself or with close um, following these guidelines that are set from um, the government. Um, Joe, I know that you've been actively involved and I do apologise if the, the questions have already been asked. Um, can you just um, give us an, a little, little update on how our, our, community, our community are actually doing with regards to the mass vaccination and the initiatives that's been put in place? So I've seen a massive move. Um, are, are these initiatives actually helping our community? Yeah, they are absolutely helping. You know, like people are very critical, and I notice the ones that are critical about uh, KFC, about food parcels, about petrol vouchers being used as incentives to get people to vaccinate, but they work. There were 7,041 cars lined up in the space of a few days at Vodafone for vaccinations. All those people got vaccinated. Um, I don't care if people are, you know, on their high horse about using KFC to do that. I reckon you do whatever you need to do to get people vaccinated, to get our people down there in those drive-throughs and the walk. walk walk-ins so it worked for sunday for sunday kongai lots of people turned up but then you know also the food vouchers the food parcels and the petrol vouchers because those are things that we need so if you can also get some help while you're getting your dad to help save your life then i think that's a good thing all those initiatives are working i will never criticize any of them even um, the ones in my area, someone criticized one of the ones because I only had 41 people. So what? That's 41 people that would never have been vaccinated if that group didn't put it on. 
So all these things are helping, whether they are community-led or provider-led, because that's the other debate that's going on out there. People saying, oh, it's provider-led. I went to that one. I was part of that one at Vodafone. It was definitely South Seas doing a lot for, for, of work there along with other providers, but the ones that were the heart of it and the key of it was the community. They were right there. They were the ones, they were probably the reason why I was so successful. And South Seas will acknowledge that as well, was the co coordinators from the different churches, youth groups, sports group, all there. So that's how you do it, you do it together. These other community led events with our health providers, they're gonna be just as great anyway. I'm now being pulled in for the Tongan Mass event on Saturday. So I'm doing everything I can to make sure Council Auckland Transport support our Tongan community and they're aiming for 2000. Personally, I'm quite happy with the Samoans leading with the 1400 in one day, but okay, I will see what I can do to help the Tongans get their 2000 in one day. Yeah. Oh, that's so man, that's awesome. It that really is, is really, uh, really is mm -hmm. awesome, Joe. I mean, I'll be honest, and I'm not going to, and I, I am going to say this out loud. Um, and I know that a lot of, you know, I was probably, probably that, that um, small percent that, you know, teased Fala a little bit because we did, um, um, I think maybe because I was a little bit bummed, I didn't get my free KFC or a hundred, $100, $50, um, $150 voucher. So I was a little bit annoyed with that after I had followed um, the rules and then everyone kind of flooded in. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, you, you are doing what you can uh, to help. And um, I do want to quickly mention um, Wayne, a massive shout out to Wayne and the Ifakasa East Tamaki as well, because... Um, their reason, and, and even though they've been verbally abused on the side um, and criticised by so many people, um, their reasoning um, behind it was because they need to get back to normal, mm -hmm. um, to their normal everyday lives. Their churches, their business in a massive way are suffering. So, um, you know, uh, congratulations to you, Joe. But I just wanted to quickly, how are you doing? Because I don't even know how you are coping right now because... Um, I'm sitting behind the screens kind of going, oh, I choose not to comment on this. I choose not to do this. But you are at the front taking that. How are you doing mentally? Hang on, mentally. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, we had a, you know, the mayor, he has like his little uh, group, his little chairs of his committees, and we had a meeting today. And this is the first time um, the meal was open to us like doing a check-in of our mental well-being so it's really cool that um we're able to do this um and and that you raise it now i'm good um i bubble on my own but um this is kind of like how, i feel like this is how i've set up my life is to do this kind of service and i love being in the community so i'm good to do what i'm doing um if i had a husband and kids then I wouldn't be able to do what I do because they would be my first priority. And, you know, I have said to um, Le Malum at South Seas, when I was at their event, I said to him, look at all these cars, look at all these people in these cars, they're good people. There's something here, you know, like once you get the nurses to do the registration questions, find out who is single and then put a mark on the car and then they can like connect up that way just to have some fun. For the people in the car. I love that actually. <laughs> yeah. And, oh yeah. And, and he was like, mm. but you could do That's it. That's like another version of speed dating. <laughs> speed dating in the drive-thru. And then I was like, oh no, if the media get a hold of this because they went for me with the KFC idea, then they're just going to go bananas over this idea. So. Well, you oh, never know if, like, the love of your life is in that same driveway as you, and better yet, they're also vaccinated, so you're both safe. <laughs> you know what, Joe? And this is what I love about you. You are so real when it comes to this. Um, let me know um, how many cars come through single because um, I, I have a few friends that wouldn't mind um, getting um, hooked up with someone that's vaccinated, <laughs> well, and fully vaccinated, but please make sure that they're actually single. <laughs> I love yeah. that. So you know, it's just it's like when you go clubbing and then the, the men there they ask you if you've got a passport, you know, if you've got a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> they ask you about your vaccine passport. Um, yeah. Gotta love the vibe, Joe. Gotta love. 
<laughs> um, no, I'll, I'll let Claudia because um, I'll let Claudia finish off with our questions. Claudia, did you have your final questions for? No, I just want to, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Josephine. So pretty much, the faster we get vaccinated, the faster we can get out of lockdown. Is that correct? And the faster we can hook up, right? <laughs> the faster you can burst your bubble. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, so there you guys, you've heard it um, straight from Josephine. The faster you get vaccinated, mm. the faster we can all get out of lockdown. Yeah, I mean, look, everyone that's watching, we're, we're still trying to cope. I mean, I've had to bring in um, a little person that I actually didn't want to bring into work today. <laughs> she, has destruct, uh, destruct, she has distracted us in so many ways, but yet she is probably the one reason why I do want to go and get vaccinated is to protect my loved ones. Um, she is my priority. So um, dig deep again. Once again, thank you so much. Um, Joe, did you want? Ha did you have any final words for us? Any encouraging messages for all of our viewers today? Uh, yeah, just it's so cool to, to be here and to talk with you both. I see your um, posts on Facebook, so I'm really glad to be to be here in the blue table. Uh, and for everyone just to keep their spirits up and just be positive that we are going to get through this, but we just need everybody to play their part and just go and vaccinate. That's really, vaccinate, stay safe, stay home. Don't get tempted to burst your bubble, no matter how hot the guy is, <laughs> don't do it. Sorry. You've heard it here. My own situation. <laughs> no hot, no hot, oh. no guy is hot enough for you to burst that bubble, guys. <laughs> or girl. Well, oh, um, I won't. I, 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 the rock is pushing so. <laughs> <laughs> Look, once again, um, Josephine, uh, yourself, um, and your team, the village behind you, uh, we just want to say a massive, massive thank you um, to all of our Pacifica community. I know a lot of us are, are sitting in the oh, I don't know um, what, what to do. That's okay. It's okay to feel feel scared. Um, what's not okay is, is um, you know, listening to the misinformation. So please, everyone, um, really, really dig deep. I mean, if you are um, worried, speak to your doctors. There are so many online platforms that are happy to answer all of your questions. Um, I know that um, our team there at, um, our Rotuman team mm -hmm. have invited uh, their, their scientists and Lorenzo. Lorenzo's show, which is right after this, also have awesome information with regards to updates um, with COVID. But a massive Fafete lover to yourself, um, Josephine and the village behind you for the awesome initiative that you guys have put through to ensure our community is safe. But um, that's us. I did want to quickly share um, a quote um, because I know that um, it's been quite crazy over the weekend. So I'm just going to find that quote that I had here um, before I let um, <laughs> Claudia um, finish us off. So the quote for today is, be strong, be fearless. Be beautiful and believe that anything is possible when you have the right people there to support you. So thank you once again to everyone for the love and support um, that we have, you know, that you guys show for our team here on Blue Table Telenor Blue TV. Honestly, um, Josephine, it's been such a great chat um, and hopefully it's um, kind of put a lot of people's um, worries at ease, um, you know, like Josephine said, um, it's all right to be scared, but you have to weigh up your options um, and at the end of the day we are getting vaccinated to not only protect ourselves and our family but also our younger um, kids who are unable to get vaccinated so we're also doing it for them so thank you so much Josephine um, and thank you so much to everyone tuning in um, and Flora also commented saying that um, if you need a babysitter to let her know so thank you Flora. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you once again Josephine thank you so much thank you to all of you our viewers uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow God bless. Bye. So fast, so far. Thank you. Ole fa mama avenga le nei male Pacific easy mo outu pe fa moli sa mo outa kuni ai ofisa mo le fa vayaso fa ngane lolo na wa unang forward sa uwa ole direct transfer 
Afai wa ye sell membership card ma e fao ngai na le internet banking. Ole matu ai fai ngo fi lava. Na le ti posi mai lava lau seleni matu account. Ole fa ati no le la fo ina lau seleni mo ai ngai sa mo. E ye 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 ngai ta ho na fa ma le ina. Mo ni si fa ma ta langai le nei au au nang fo. Ba la au le telefoni o val selau o o o ta si o no no. Po le lua fitu o no fitu i fa fitu fa. Pe text mai fo ilu sua fa ili valu tolu o. Telephone voucher is one of the most convenient ways that I'm finding now to do my shopping here at Mama Jo. And I, my sister just sent through the voucher on my cell phone, and I just come straight into Mama Jo to do my shopping. Well, let's see if you have a bit of silly on the town. Well, let's see if you have a bit of a style on the town. I think it's really convenient for families overseas if they don't know what to, how to help their families here. Um, this is the perfect way to get the money. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to I may say that I'm going to tell you 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 that I'm going to t